Did you know that the EPA has reported that we spend 90% of our time indoors? As designers, we know the designs of our spaces impact our health, mood, and productivity. So it's really up to us to make sure we're designing something that's functional and beautiful. And I think this is exactly where Midjourney can shine. If you don't know what Midjourney is, it's a text to image gen AI system. And what that means is you type in a prompt, which is a string of words or a sentence or a paragraph, and it outputs an image. So in this video, what I want to show you is how to prompt, the different types of prompting, because you can prompt with text and an image, and how to make your designs better using AI. So let's get started. So if you go to midjourney.com, you're going to be greeted with this site. I'm going to go over to login. If you haven't signed up for Midjourney, make sure you do that first. So I'm going to go into login. And this is the explore screen. Everything you see here is actually created by other people. This isn't for me. And what's cool about this is Midjourney is kind of like a community, meaning everybody's constantly sharing their work. So I can go over to any of these images and actually grab the image to use as a prompt or the text prompt. It's actually a really great way to learn from others, like how they're generating these really nice images. So whenever you have downtime, recommend checking this out. We want to go over to create. This is where we're going to be spending our time generating images. So in order for us to generate an image, we need a prompt. And again, a prompt is just a sentence and it's a string of different elements. And these elements can be the type of space, the lighting, the materials and the context. So let's use that as a formula. So what I mean by that is let's say we are commissioned to work on an interior project. I want to redesign a living room. So what I want to do here is I want to explain to Midjourney what I'm creating. So I'm going to start off by saying this is a photo because I want it to be realistic, right? So photo of the living room. And the cool thing about Midjourney is you can actually give it direction. So what I mean by that is I could say put the sofa on the right or put a window to the left and it'll actually react to that. So check this out. Photo of a living room, sofa on the right, window wall on the left. And I can even give it a design style. So let's say this is mid-century, mid-century style interior. I can give it a time of day, let's say natural light, sunny, located in a forest. Okay. And all I have to do is hit enter. Okay. It's going to think for a little bit. And this is our prompt here. And my history is all down here. So you can see my past images that I've generated and iterated on. So as you can see here, Let's look at the prompt, right? So we set a photo of a living room, looks just like a living room. We have the sofa on the right and a window wall on the left. And this is all mid-century style, natural light, sunny and located in a forest. So you can see here that Midjourney actually reacted to our prompt. And what I really like about this is traditionally when we're looking for reference images for a project, we need to go to Pinterest or Google images and we have to find like really generic images. It's not project specific. So in your case, if you know there's a window on the left, put that in your prompt, right? So just to get a little more comfortable with the user interface, if you hover over any of your prompts, you can actually use the text right here and you can go and edit some things. So now if I want, I don't want mid-century style, Let's do traditional style and let's say nighttime in New York City. And we could say that this is an apartment and I'll hit enter. So as you can see, it's thinking again, you're always going to get four options that come out of this. And there we go. We've got that traditional style. It looks like New York City, right? We're actually getting the landmarks in this. So that makes it even crazier that it's capable of doing this. Generally, it does a good job respecting the directions. Sure, you might have one option that's a little bit off. But this is pretty good for something that's generating something from scratch. When you really like an image and you want to kind of, you know, work on it further, if you click it, you're going to open a bunch of different options in the bottom right. Okay. You can download it if you want, but you can also vary it. Meaning I like the general structure of the image, but I just want more options of it. So watch this. If I hit strong, it's going to give me four. This is my cue four strong variations of this. So they're not going to look as similar, but they're going to have similar structure. So as, as you can see, the sofa's changed a lot. They're changing, you know, some details here. So that's what that means. It's going to preserve the overall structure, but things are going to change like our roof line changed here, the furniture layout. So that's what that means. And it's going to tag it as a variation. Then we have our upscaler. 
So the upscaler is just going to boost the resolution. So instead of this being like a 1K image, it'll be a 2K image. So you're going to get some more finer details. It's going to look more photorealistic, better for your presentations. It's not going to look as blurry. So let's do that. So it's going to run it. And within a couple seconds, we'll get our upscale. So while that loads, this was our before, you know, it's got a decent amount of detail. And this is our upscale. You see how much sharper that looks compared to our previous image? So that's the point of upscaling it, okay? So if I were to just go back, we could rerun this whole image from scratch or we can use it as an image prompt. So we can say, use the image as a starting point. So what that means is we were doing text prompts, right? Meaning generate something from my text. But here we're saying, I want you to actually look at this image and use that as the inspiration. So watch this, I'm gonna hit image. What you're gonna see here is it dropped it right here into the image slot. If you don't see anything here, you know, make sure you hit image or click this to manually add your own image if you don't want it to come from mid-journey. That's the other thing. It doesn't need to come from mid-journey, right? It can actually come from the internet, find a reference image and drop that in. But this is a nice way to just drop that in. So I hit image. So now that I've got this here, I can add a prompt to kind of complement this. So now I can say mid-century living room, dark materials, leather chair, round sofa, and we'll keep it in a four. So really, this is going to generate four options that are a mixture of this image with our text prompt. So it's not going to make this image 100%. It's going to start giving us variations of that. So as you can see here, it did a good job listening to that. We've got the darker materials, right? So if we look down here, See the comparison of the floors? This is much darker. This is much lighter. It changed our sofa and everything. So you get the overall look and feel, right? Like it kept our facade here. So that's the point. If you want to iterate off of something, let's say a reference image, this is a great workflow. So let's say you were to find an image from the internet. How does that work? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go to Mark Daily and I'm gonna search with B Farm. There's a project that I love so I want to find the kitchen and I'll put the link in the description. So you have easy access to that. All I'm going to do is right click, save image as, and now I can go up here to reference image and any images you've used before will live right here. So that's kind of nice. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to find the reference image. It's going to upload and I'm going to click it once and it's going to add it to it. So now I could do something similar. I'm going to say dark materials, dark material, living room and kitchen, nighttime forests. And now it's going to combine the two. But again, this is using an image I got off the internet. And these will always be saved here, which is really nice and convenient. So there you go. We've got dark materials. It's using the structure of our image, right? It's looking at the actual photograph and it's copying the overall look and feel of it. But it's not 100%, right? It's going to be a little creative. So that's my point. It's not going to just convert this. It's going to look at it as inspiration. Kind of how like we work as designers, right? We're not going to copy something 100%. We're going to look at it and we're going to make it our own. So now that we've got this, let's talk about how we can customize things. So I'm going to go over to use and it's going to reuse everything. And right over here, I can actually customize the image size. Generally, you probably want something landscape better suited for presentations, but you have different aspect ratios. So you can go portrait, which is vertical or you can go landscape, which is horizontal. And you also have the option where it can vary off the prompt, meaning a lower stylization will match the prompt more and a higher stylization will be more creative. I find the 100 base setting totally fine. I wouldn't mess with weirdness. That's generally for characters. Variety, you know those four images we get? This is if you wanna add you know, some more spice to each of them so they're not so samey samey. So watch this, let's do 50. And then I'm just going to hit enter. And this will be a good comparison against these. Again, it's the same prompt and image, but we changed the aspect ratio and we changed the amount of chaos between them. So you see how drastically different these look. So that's why I don't recommend going too high with them. Um, but it looks very different from our original image. And that's just because of one setting here. I'm just going to hit reset. So another cool trick I want to show you is let's say I don't want something that's kind of stylized. Like I don't want these photorealistic images. So watch this. Watercolor painting of a landscape. So if I just generate a random image of a watercolor, I get these really nice watercolors, right? 
beautiful illustrations, but how does this apply to my actual project, right? So watch this. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to use it, right? And then I'm going to click on this image. And right here, you say, you see where it says use style. So now we've got two attachments here. The style is the actual aesthetic of this. So not the structure, but the aesthetic. The structure is our living room. The style is this watercolor. So now if I hit enter, watch what's going to happen. We're going to get four more options and it should look like our mid-century living room with this kind of watercolor aesthetic. So as you can see, we've got that loose watercolor style. And if you want it more greatly influenced, you can drop this. So I'm going to go to use, I'm going to drop this. And now this is just going to make a brand new image using that style. So this makes it like 100% this, this is kind of a mix between the two. So really useful to point out if there's an image you really like and you want to grab its style and apply it, this is how you would do it. The next thing I want to explain is when it comes to prompting, I find that people usually get stuck on this step. So I want to point out a couple tips to make it easier for you to prompt. So if you go right over here to add images as your prompt, if you hover over the eye, it's going to think for a little, and it's actually going to translate components of that image into a prompt. So look at that. So I can click this, a living room with a gray sofa and coffee table, and I'll add that to my prompt right up here. I can scroll down and grab any of these and quickly build a prompt. So you don't need to come up with the prompts from scratch. You can actually use reference images to do that for you. And we'll see what we get. So we're talking about a living room with a gray sofa and a coffee table, minimalist style, warm lighting. And this is all from keywords of an image, okay? Not a reference image. So just pointing that out there. Another useful way of generating prompts, you could use ChatGPT to generate ideas. You can say, describe this image to me. That's really useful. Or if you don't have access to ChatGPT, you can use Bing Chat. Bing Chat is built right into Bing, totally free. So you've got options there. And what that looks like is if I open up Edge, I can just go here. I can open that up. I can drag an image in and then say, describe this image to me as a mid-journey prompt. I get a great prompt. So I'm just going to drop this in. I don't need that part. And let's see what we get. So again, that was our reference image, which is this guy. So let's see how close it gets. That's pretty close, right? And that was extracted from here using Bing Chat. That's totally free. So you've got a couple options, right? You could use the describe function or extraction. So now that we have all these different options, let's talk about the typical workflow to help refine your designs. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find one that I really liked. Usually what I do when I'm designing a space and I want to, you know, fine tune it for my own aesthetic, I'll grab the image and I'll just keep running variations and revising the prompt until it meets my needs. So I'm going to revise it step by step. So now that I got this, these are pretty good, but I want to change this a bit. If I do rerun, it's going to be the same version of the reference image and the prompt, but rerun. If I hit use, then I can start tweaking things. And this is where the process comes in. So if I see, okay, dark materials aren't working for me, I can change this to light materials and then I can change the setting if I don't like that. But this is really all it takes for you to design spaces. And this didn't take much time at all, right? Like obviously we went through all the steps, but if we were focused on creating one space, we could just sit there, hit use, right? Change a couple words, resend, rinse and repeat until we're happy with the result. And there you go. So we're getting lighter materials. We still have a brown sofa because we have that there. But you'll notice that we don't have the New York City apartment. And one of the reasons is because of this reference image. So if we hit use and we drop this and then we hit enter, you're going to see that it's no longer looking at that and it's going to be like a fresher example. So there you go. So now we've lost the influence of the forest. Just pointing that out because th there's been times where people are prompting and they're like, oh, I don't know why nothing's changing. That's exactly why. So once you start generating a bunch of different options for your project, it's a good idea to be organized to some degree. So right over here, you can actually generate folders. So if I click over here, create folder, I can say option one, you know, maybe I put the residence name and I can actually drag in assets. There you go. So this is a great way. So you can have option one, option two, and you can easily switch between them. The other nice thing is since the UI is pretty smart, you can drag these images directly to the bar and I'll add it right there. So that'll save you some time when it comes to 
actually prompting. And now the last thing I want to talk about is the editor. So if we go right down here to editor, this is the last step, in my opinion, when it comes to refining your images. So there's a couple different things you could do. You can erase details and you can also outcrop, meaning if you want a wider image, let's say you started with a square and you want it to generate more detail, I could do that. So watch this. So I'm going to shrink my image down. And now when I hit submit, it's going to generate all this space here. I'm going to hit close and look at that. So this is outcropping. So you see how it's adding all those details? And that was just me going into the editor and shrinking it down. So I've got this, this is great. But let's say I don't like the assets here. That's where erase is gonna come in. So I can just go here and submit that. As you can see, it's trying to erase that. Yep, exactly. Much cleaner than before. And that's it. That's all it takes to generate options with mid journey. So just remember, you need to have a strong prompt or it's just not gonna look great, right? You want to be as specific as possible. Remember the formula that I gave you earlier on. You can always iterate by doing variations and simply reusing a prompt and changing work. That's it. So if you have any questions, just drop it in the comments and I'll get back to you.